when cutting the tape, it's important to round the corners and that reduces the chances of lifting and peeling. The simplest way is to just fold it back on itself so you only need to do it once and then just simply trim off those corners. Splitting the tape down the middle so that we have two separate tails that we can create different forces or different movement corrections from the same piece of tape. Whenever you have separate pieces, it's good to just tear the backing paper so they come off separately. Avoid bridging type techniques that you may have done with other tapes with dynamic tape. And by bridging, what we mean is where we have one end on, we shorten things up and then we place the other end on and then come down. The reason being the forces are much, much higher in dynamic tape than they are in a kinesiology tape for example and so by putting those two points on first when we come down we really start to focus the attention on those two ends and we're more likely to get a, a, a mechanical irritation a blister or see that the tape wants to lift off a little bit despite having a much much stronger adhesive so what we do do instead is we actually try to anchor and then get the tension along the entire piece of tape to keep that nice and uniform and smooth down with our fingers as much of the tape as we can prior to letting go of our thumb. And then we can put this second anchor point on with absolutely no tension once again. That way, if we do have creases here, we can then pull out, making sure we hold our anchor point, pull out and take those creases out. But by doing it this way, we don't focus all that force on the ends we're going to get better adhesion and less likelihood of running into blisters. There's quite a difference between the box or soft tissue offload that we'll do with our dynamic tape and the space creation type of techniques that you may have done with the kinesiology tape, particularly with regard to the handling. Uh, some of the box techniques in the past using our rigid athletic tapes have uh, been shown to reduce things like our uh, or increase rather our pressure pain thresholds, increase our grip strength, and so make improvements with things like our tennis elbow. We've seen more recently in 2014, Francois Hug and Co showed on the quadriceps muscle that we get a reduction in the stress on the muscle fibers when we box it all up and hold it there using the resistance of the tape. So we follow the similar sort of methodology using the dynamic tape. So the handling is quite different. With your space creation type techniques, often they are in a little bit of a lengthened position or, or we're starting in the middle of the tape, uh, tearing that, sticking that down and using the tape to bunch up the skin. With this, we're actually manually with our hands pulling everything together and bunching that up and then sticking down and holding it there using the resistance of the tape. So the tape itself doesn't have convolutions or anything in it. Uh, the tape is actually nice and straight and it's holding this soft tissue. So even in the lengthened position, we have all of this deep boxing of all of this soft tissue. And there are many ways we can do it. We can create V's around things or even on top a triangle. We can uh, cross over and make a cross or an X. We can create U's that come underneath or C's or brackets on either side. So there are many, many ways to do it. But the handling is a little different, so let's just have a quick look at that. So say we're going to box up around uh, this forearm, around the extensors here and onto that lateral epicondyle. We're going to anchor with our thumb, pull all of that soft tissue together, get our tension on. Okay, while we hold that there, we're going to sweep through and then our other anchor point has no tension. Okay, and even with that one piece, we can see how we start to get this soft, spongy area. It starts to bunch up, give us this orange peel type of effect occurring. Okay, we might want to come in the other way. So again, we'll start on skin when possible. And then we'll come around. So this can be useful for our tendinopathies that we know don't like that combination of tensile load and compressive load. So this can perhaps affect that compressive load. 
our neural tissue as well. If it's very sensitized, we know it doesn't like stretch or elongation, which we test for with our neural tissue provocation tests, but it also doesn't like uh, compression. So we can, where some of those nerves are relatively superficial or where there's a lot of soft tissue, uh, we can maybe box up around those nerves. And also our muscle tears, uh, as we just said, or our muscle pulls and strains, as we just heard, uh, we can reduce the stress on those muscle fibres. So not only can we do the work of the muscle, but we can also directly affect the mechanical stress on those muscle fibres. So again, we can anchor. This time I'm going to swap my hands, come in underneath, anchor, pull all that soft tissue together, tension on, and stick down with a nice anchor point. Okay, and we can really start to box this up. If we wanted to go one further, we could even come another strip down in this direction to maximally box everything up. Anchor, tension on, so pull all that soft tissue in together once again and stick down. And note there are no uh, creases of skin under the tape. We're not folding the skin up underneath the tape. That can cause irritation. It's smooth under there. We don't have convolutions in the tape. We just have this uh, boxed up, soft, spongy area that we've created by pulling everything together and holding it there with the tape. Because we're approaching things biomechanically with the dynamic tape, a lot more force, we're asking the tape to do some of the work using that high resistance and recoil of the tape and also by putting people into a short position and using it like a bungee cord or a spring, the handling is quite different. So you may have done with kinesiology tapes in the past on the shoulders where you start in the middle and come down from one side to the other. With dynamic tape, we don't want to do that. We want to actually start from one side, get uniform tension along the whole piece of tape and it's the movement that creates the force for us. So all we're doing is applying the tape, holding our anchor, making sure we just take up the slack across the whole piece of tape so we have uniform tension across the tape, smoothing that down all the way across, and then another nice anchor point without any tape. So the real tension comes when Nick drops his shoulders down here, that's when it starts to actually stretch and we get even force, even distribution of that force across the tape. If we start in the middle and go one side and then the other side, we have to be very accurate with making sure we're symmetrical with the position and also with our tension as we apply it, which is much more difficult to do and we may end up with some asymmetry there. So we start on one side, take up the slack, smooth the whole piece down and then let the tension kick in as the shoulders drop. Often people have some difficulty getting around the corners with dynamic tape. The four-way stretch means that we can go right around, almost do a circle, uh, but there is a little bit of a trick to it. So if we're just coming up off the arm here, just as an example of how to get around the corner, I'm going to bring that up. The key is to make sure that you have your tension on the tape. It's nice and uniform. And then we need to smooth as we go. So we're going to smooth that down. And then now I can let go of the anchor point. We have sufficient amount of tape in contact with the skin, but I haven't lost my tension. And I just keep the tension on as we turn around. And you can see we can do a pretty much a full circle there without uh, losing tension. So we maintain our force and without getting the tape bunching up as we go around. So the trick is maintain tension and then smooth as we go. Mm -hmm.